Two, what makes you happy? One, what has made you smile lately? I bet most of you have thought of your phone, or new clothes, or video game. Before I went to Uganda five years ago, I thought the same thing. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with these things, but we don't realize that we have way more than we actually need. And true happiness comes from deep inside of us, and not things we can buy from the store. About 226.7 million people are starving in Africa. 42.3% of the population lives on $1.90 or less per day. That means every cent they earn goes towards their survival. You may be thinking, how could these people possibly be happy? When I traveled to Uganda, I noticed so many differences in our communities. The condition of schools and even small things such as roads weren't nearly as nice as ours. Students have to walk a great distance just to go to school in their bare feet, which can cause many health issues. Ticks and other bugs can be embedded in the soles of children's feet. How lucky I am to have shoes here in Canada. I also went to many of the communities I fed into the schools I visited. The majority of the people lived in small, dark huts made of bamboo, mud, and sometimes manure. The huts typically had no air ventilation, doors, or even windows. One of the schools I visited, God's Gift School, a school in a rural community, had very few supplies because the government does not provide funding. The students and teachers improvised and typically used mud mixed with small chips of wood to make markers. They were so excited when we gave them markers, it was just as if they got the best gift ever. In contrast, students here in Canada don't treat the supplies that were given to us with care, and we take them for granted. I had the opportunity of doing some home visits. Each family I visited received a package of household and care items, which included a twin-size mattress, a blanket, a washing basin, two water jugs, a bar of soap, and a mosquito net. All those items were supplied equally for both large or small families. All family members had huge smiles on their faces no matter what, and they were so excited to have those things. What seemed insignificant to us was life-changing for them. Our culture is always based on seeking new things and fitting in, especially in our schools today. We are always striving to have the newest and up-to-date trends and fashions and latest technology, the best of everything. In contrast, many families in Africa don't have the privilege of having things like clean water, food, or even a safe place to rest at night. Though these problems do occur in Canada, they are not quite as severe as they are in Africa. I also visited another school named Daystar, located in a village called Masese. This village was known as a slum community. When we were walking through Masese, it broke my heart seeing how families lived. I couldn't imagine what their lives were like. It was so different from my own. Open sewers separated one lot of dilapidated huts from another. The vast majority of the community was infected by HIV. Children are not immune. They are often born with HIV passed down from their infected mothers. The main source of income for the people of Masese was the alcohol they produced in their local distillery. The distillery is not what you'd imagine, though. There are no rules put into place to ensure safety, health, and especially for women and children. Men were walking around in rubber boots in the black fermenting mash, while women and children were walking in it in their bare feet. Children in this community grow up with absent fathers who are often drunk and unable to properly care for them. For them. Kids grow up quickly and learn how to take care for themselves. It is the children of this community that populate Daystar School. The classrooms are overcrowded with some classes of 70, and teachers are struggling to manage. One of the rooms in the school is designated as a dorm room, for many of the students who cannot live at home due to safety reasons. I found it shocking to see how these children relied on the school to give them a safe place to sleep at night. I also had the opportunity of visiting Home of Hope, an orphanage for children with cerebral palsy. Infants who contract malaria are susceptible to developing complications that can lead to cerebral palsy. All the children there were abandoned from their families who were not equipped to care for a child with this disease. In their culture, families with children who have disabilities are often looked down upon. Edith, the founder of Home of Hope, had a son with cerebral palsy. The father wanted to abandon them, but she refused. The husband left them both, and they were on their own. Soon after, she established Home of Hope to help kids who were like her son. One of the children that was rescued by Edith was found tied to a tree covered in her own filth. Here in Canada, treating a child like that is almost unheard of. Children of all needs and backgrounds are cared for and educated, 
They're not left to fend for themselves. One of the main things I noticed on my trip was that no matter how little these people had, they were always smiling. People who had lost loved ones, people who were sick or had disability were smiling. They were so grateful for every little thing and cherished the moments that we could have together. So before you go and buy that new iPhone just because your friends have it, or want to buy the most trendy shoes, think, do you really need it? Will it make you happy? Or are you just falling into the trap of dissatisfaction our culture has created, where enough is never enough? Because if your happiness is rooted in something you can lose or break, your happiness will be short-lived. So for a moment, choose gratitude instead of complaining. For a moment, choose giving instead of taking. For a moment, choose someone else's needs above your own and smile. That's what I learned in Uganda.